Welcome back to another Collectible Spotlight. I'm that Halloween movie collector, Pat. This week, we're going to take a look at the three Halloween story novels that uh, kind of flew under the radar. A lot of people didn't know about them at the time. I found out about them a little bit after the fact when they were released as well, because they really weren't well known at the time. The three Halloween novels by Kelly O'Rourke. There were uh, three in the trilogy. Uh, Michael Myers appeared in each novel, all taking place in Haddonfield. The story, it did consist of the brother and sister arc, and um, it was they were pretty cool. And uh, they put, kind of flew under the radar. Actually, if you do read them, they'd be, they're kind of cool stories. And if anybody ever did a fan film, they could actually use the stories. It would be pretty cool. Or if they ever adapted it into you know, a Halloween anthology down the, down the line, if they ever go that route when, you know, once the movies are done. So let's dive into these novels. If you're not familiar with them, author Kelly O'Rourke, who also goes by the name Kelly Reno on other publications, was associated with one of the original producers of Halloween, Joseph Wolf. We all know who Joe Wolf was. Joe Wolf was co-found, who helped co-found Compass International Pictures with Erwin Yablons. Who was Erwin Yablons? He was basically the man who created the Halloween idea, for those that did not know, but I'm sure most Halloween fanatics know who Erwin Yablons is. Uh, he was also a distributor and um, executive producer on Halloween. And if you ever get a chance to read it, go uh, read his book, The Man Behind Halloween, which is a great book. It's got a lot of great stories in it. Compass International Pictures uh, actually closed its doors in 1981, only to reemerge four years later as Trankus International Films. And to this day, Trankus holds the copyright to Halloween. Now, the only boundary that O'Rourke had in writing these novels was to keep them as uh, an adult not adult, young adult, I should say, young adult uh, books. So this way they weren't too gory and too violent. So they, you can get a, a teen audience reading them. They're like like older teen novels. I guess sort of, sort of in the vein of like those Goosebumps novels, which weren't too, too bad. Now, if you do get all of the novels, they do have some really cool artwork on the covers. And, uh, and they're very, they've become very collectible over time. And very hard to get too. But let's uh, look into them. The first of the trilogy was number one, The Scream Factory, published in October of 1997. The story of The Scream Factory was, Laurie and her friends are asked to create a haunted house in the basement of Haddonfield City Hall. They jump at the chance, but an old pro soon turns their little horror show into a bloody death trap. Michael Myers has returned to Haddonfield and it's a homecoming they won't soon forget. The second of the trilogy was number two, The Old Myers Place, published in December of 1997. The story of The Old Myers Place was, Mary White just moved to Haddonfield. Being the new girl is tough, but she finally seems to be settling in. She's friends with a popular girl. She dated a gorgeous guy. Everything is perfect, but Mary's family moved into the old Myers place. In fact, Mary's sleeping in the very bedroom where Michael Myers killed his sister. Now he's coming back to make sure she sleeps like the dead. Now that alone would be worth watching. That is a great premise for a movie. The third of the trilogy was number three, The Madhouse, published in February of 1998. The story of The Madhouse was, Christine Ray's summer vacation has been nothing but lame dates and boring camping trips. Then she sees an ad, volunteer film crew needed for documentary on haunted sites. Spend the night at Smith Grove Mental Hospital if you dare. She definitely dares. That place is the ultimate scary site. Michael Myers himself was locked up there for 15 years before he escaped. Totally cool. But what she and her new filmmaking friends don't know is that Michael Myers still has a room at Smith's Grove and visiting hours are over. Now, this novel takes place in Smith's Grove. Doctors, the doctor in it, um, Michael's psychiatrist, does not appear as Dr. Loomis, but as Dr. Blackwell for some, for some strange reason. I don't know why the name was changed. Maybe some type of licensing thing. Who the hell knows? But yeah, he was, his name was Dr. Blackwell. Um, I read the three of them years ago so to say i remember them very very well i don't i do remember bits and pieces of them and they were they're were, they were relatively short read they're about 173 pages each so you, you and they're all paperback so you can do you can pretty much read them pretty fast if you're a fast reader and they're worth reading they're they're interesting now the t the tough thing is finding them so if you can find them they're they're a fun read i would definitely recommend them now, the, the sad part is, see, they, when they were released back in 97 and 98, they retailed for $4.50 each, which is nothing for a book. But now, since they had a limited run, they're long out of print. Now they're selling for anywhere between $150 to $300 each. And uh, like I've said in many of these before, just because somebody's asking $300 doesn't mean they're going to get it. They can ask whatever they want. 
So, you know, shop around and keep looking. But they do command well over $100, especially in good condition. So they are tough to find. So if you can find them, great. They're, they're a great read. Oh, let's see if I can get that glare. They have some great artwork and um, they're just cool things to have to add into your collection. You know, no collection is complete without them. They go along great with the original movie novels and they're standing up, they sit right alongside them in my collection. So that's this week's collectible spotlight. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, hopefully, hopefully it gives you something to look for now and then keep your eyes open. Maybe you can find one just laying around. Some, yeah, I see a lot of people where they find, you know, some Halloween novels and uh, used bookstores. So keep an eye out now that you know that they exist and see if you get them for a good deal. But if you'd like to see anything uh, behind me, do a collectible spotlight. You can uh, reach out to me. All the information is in the description. Uh, or go to my Instagram page, which is at that Halloween movie collector, where my entire collection is pretty much pictures, details, anything about it. And if it's not there, I put it up, you know, I try to post each day or new things come up. Also, every Sunday at 7 p.m., I do a Halloween collector's podcast over on the Michaels Horror and Pinball channel with some great guys, some great th friends. And you'll have a great time if you stop by and chat with us or watch it after the fact. It's pretty entertaining. Also, I have a Halloween and Michael Myers collectors group over on Facebook. So join a great community of people, buy, sell, trade, show off your collection, just have a great time. So hopefully you guys will stop by and become members of that too. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something along the way. I know I did doing some research on the books and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you soon.